The practice facility is actually going to be made up of five separate areas. The short game area, the driving range tee, the performance center which will be an indoor outdoor facility, the wedge course, and the professional teaching area on the far end. On the property we will have a total of eight greens in which to work on your golf game. You'll be able to work on putting, chipping, pitching, bunker play, lob shots, you name it. The first hole on the East Course promises to be such a great start to a new fun golf adventure at Farmington. If you're a beginner golfer and only fly the ball 100 yards or so, all you need to do is carry the bunker on the left and watch it run all the way onto the green. The advanced player can choose to play a Scottish shot or may take it up high and drop it in and make it stop on the big green. Don't go long, got a hidden bunker back there to save you from going into the rocks. When I look at the second hole, it's hard to believe that this was once the corridor for our very first hole. The trees have been cleared out, the fairway is much wider, and we've graded it out to make it much flatter. It's still plenty of challenge with the ball below your feet, but not the same severity that it once was. The key decision for many will be the decision off the tee. Do you lay up or do you try to thread the needle between the bunkers? There's lots of trouble down by the green. My advice is, if you're going to go for it, you better be awful straight. Hang back about 80 yards and leave yourself a chance to either run it on from 80 yards or hit a nice pitch. Birdie will be in the bag with one good pitch shot. The picturesque third hole promises to be more than just a pretty face. It's going to be awful challenging, but provide opportunity for all levels of play. The long tee box gives us many choices for our distance. We can go all the way up to 100 yards or as far back as 175. There is plenty of room to slip one up through the bunkers and give yourself a fair chance at a par or birdie on this hole. Hit a good one here. The fourth hole promises to be so much fun. With distance anywhere from 50 to 75 yards, everyone is gonna look forward to the chance to make an ace. The second par four hole is the fifth hole. This one promises to be a real, real challenge. Perhaps the most difficult hole on the new course. Obviously when you see this hole, you see the massive fairway bunker that faces you off the tee. It's essential that you stay clear of that and get the ball up onto the plateau. Once there, the party is just getting started. As you look down the fairway to the green, there's a mound to the left. Try to stay clear of that because right behind it is a hidden bunker. Those that are lacking in distance may be wise to aim a little to the right and play their third shot on the green and try to get it up and down for a challenging and difficult par. The more advanced player can take dead aim and fire it up over the mound and give a chance at a nice birdie. The sixth hole is the third and final par three on the new 10 hole course. Some people may think of this as the old fourth hole, but there's many changes that make this hole so much better. The elimination of a couple of trees and the addition of a few bunkers have made this hole much more challenging. The green was lowered and widened as was the bunker. Hit it up to the right on your second shot and the ball will carry them down on the green. This hole promises to be fun for the novice and the advanced player. Good luck and stay clear of the train on the old whistle stop hole. You can see that it has a look very similar to a Northern California golf course. The tilted pine hanging over the right side of the green that is surrounded by an array of bunkers just gives you a look that says, are we really in Virginia? Good luck with this one. Hopefully there'll be a birdie or two and maybe even an ace before the season is over. The eighth hole ranges in distance anywhere from 100 to 160 yards. This hole is surrounded by bunkers and the downhill shot will make the hole much more enjoyable than it once was. The ninth hole is a great example of how the architect has given us options to play the hole. The back tee on the right shows you a blind shot much like the fifth hole at La Hinch in Ireland. The shot on the left shows you the distance anywhere from 100 down to 60 yards. Anything up to the right will kick down on the green as the architect has used the slope and the hard ground to give us a chance to play the hole the way the Irish and Scottish would. The tenth hole and final hole on the east course is also the longest. It could also be the most challenging. A narrow tee shot surrounded by trees will get you going. 
Once you have that, you must negotiate the cross bunkers that navigate their way across the fairway. Obviously, you're going to make a decision. Do you go right, left, or short? The place to hit it is over to the right. Anything short and left is going to be a problem. Once you're to the right of the hole, all you have to negotiate is the small bunker. You're a pitch and putt away from a four, five, or six on this hole. I can assure you if you make par, you'll win most bets. Good luck and hope you enjoy playing the course.